What's up everybody, NEXT here, coming to you today from the Pyramid of Khafre. Pharaoh Khafre, or Khafre, known to the Greeks as Chephron, is not only credited with the Great Sphinx of Egypt, but also attributed to Giza's central and second largest pyramid. In ancient times, this pyramid was called Khafre is Great. Now, apart from Herodotus crediting Khafre with this pyramid and references to Khafre found at the funerary complex, for the most part, this pyramid, like others, is largely anonymous. And though it appears to tower above the Great Pyramid of Khufu, it's actually a few meters shorter, but the optical illusion is due to having been built on a higher slope of Mokatam formation that makes up the Giza Plateau. One of the most obvious and unique features of this pyramid is that many of its casing stones, observable at the upper quarter of the pyramid, remain in place. Most were made of terra limestone, but some stones, such as the bottom course of outer casings, were made of granite. But for our purposes today, however, it's not going to be about the exterior, but the inside of Khafre's pyramid. I'm going to be taking you inside the pyramid for a point of view journey. Now I'm not going to say much because I want this video to be more about your experience. This video is for you. Enjoy. <laughs>
تمام زي حضرتك انا I hope you enjoyed this journey inside the Pyramid of Khafra. Again, I did not want to say too much while inside the pyramid as to give you more of an unbiased experience. I'd like this video to be for you. But I would like to take this opportunity now to explain some of the features that we were looking at. Structurally speaking, the inner chamber is lined with limestone and sits under a gable roof. But one of the very first things you'll notice is the graffiti left behind by Italian explorer Giovanni Belzoni who rediscovered the entrance to the upper passage, made his way into the chamber in 1818, and found, to his disappointment, that he was not the first to enter it in post pharaonic times. The graffiti itself is now considered somewhat of a relic. Unlike the so-called sarcophagus of the Great Pyramid, this mysterious stone box was largely undamaged and it even had its lid intact. However, much like the Serapium at Saqqara, Curiously, bones were found inside, but they turned out to be that of a bull. Now it is well established in Egyptology how in much later periods, bulls were buried as symbols of the Pharaoh himself, or as Osiris, that is the netter that represents the king in the afterlife. This is a more esoteric concept diametrically opposed to that of Horus, which represented the living king on his journey to return to the source. But the bones are thought by some Egyptologists to have been thrown in as a sacrifice long after the king's body had been robbed or lost. However, no body nor any trace of a pharaonic burial was ever found inside. I find this particularly interesting because oceans apart we find bones inside the Kukulkan pyramid at Chichen Itza. But in this case, they were embedded into the structure itself, right into the wall. And very ancient oracle bones were also found at the Temple of Delphi. Now, while we're quick to reduce bones to mere relics, I think there may have been a more significant and perhaps ritualistic and somewhat magical purpose for the use of specific bones at these sacred sites. 
This is of course the subject for another video, but I just wanted to touch on it a bit here because again, no human body or any trace of a pharaonic burial was ever found inside the pyramid. Although the logical explanation, the one offered by Egyptologists, is to simply say the body got robbed or lost, may be nothing more than an easy way out, one that prevents us from developing a deeper understanding for what could possibly be a lost technology, or rather a sacred science of the ancients that we have yet to fully ascertain. Why are bones not only found inside these mysterious stone boxes, but also found inside the stone walls of some pyramids themselves, as if seeds intended to symbolically or even functionally serve some purpose. When engineer Christopher Dunn got the chance to examine the inside of the sarcophagus, he was astounded by what he discovered. Using his precision grade tools, he found the sides of the box's interior to be perfectly flat and square, carved to the same level of accuracy one would expect from a modern manufacturing company. And the chamber itself certainly has an energy to it, one that really can't be described in words. But there's a reason why people, even today, are compelled to sit quietly and contemplate inside. When I arrived in the chamber on this day, there was already a group of people sitting inside, quietly meditating. So, let me know what you noticed and what you think about bones found inside the pyramids around the world. If anything, I'll be watching the comments section to join in the discussion. I want this footage to be a tool for you. We are now walking over to the western area of the pyramid. For some reason, sometimes it's technically off limits. But I have uploaded another video here on this channel exploring the western enclosure of the Khafra Pyramid, where we take a up-close look at the caverns carved into the bedrock and examine some of the interesting stones lying around inside the enclosure space. Thanks for watching everyone. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. Do consider sharing with your friends as it helps to grow the channel. You can support my efforts and this channel over at Patreon. I do have some cool rewards set up for you. And if you're new here and have not already done so, please subscribe.